I am logged into our course on Canvas. So the first thing I'd like you to do is visit files in the in the menu. And then um, we are starting exercise five this week, which is due next week. Got a week to do it. Um, so I'm going to just hover over exercise five. Oop, I accidentally clicked on it. Let me go back to, if I click on files, I'm back to the top level folder. And I'm going to hover over exercise five and it's not letting me hover. Hold on here. Why is it not letting me hover? Come on. Oh, there. Now it's letting me hover. And then I'm going to go to the dot, 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 click on that, and click download. So it's downloading. So for exercise five, I provide you with a lot of images to work with in Photoshop. And, and I always get the question, can I use my own images? Uh, well, you're going to have the opportunity to use your own images for the first Photoshop project. So I would focus on learning the skills and sharpening your skills rather than spending any time searching for images. You can definitely search for images for, um, for use in the next project, which is going to be similar to this exercise where you're going to be um, finding images and various, various images and piecing them together to create a new image. That's what we're doing this week with the images I provide. So now exercise five is downloaded. So I'm just going to go and whoops, I'm in the wrong folder here. It's going to go to downloads and it would be the one called course files export and I'm just going to double click on that and it's expanding into the exercise 5 folder so that you have everything there. You can always in canvas, you can browse on, see what's in exercise 5 in canvas. There's a folder called Fruits and Sorts, a folder called Human Faces. There's the exercise 5 assignment instructions. And there's a handout that I'm providing you in um, Photoshop or Photoshop tools that we'll be using. But Fruits and Sorts, you can, um, you can always double click on these things, these images, it's just lots of uh, images of various fruits and vegetables and accessories to piece together to create a creature. So that's um, one option that you'll have for this exercise. Another option is human faces, combining various um, facial features together to create a new face. So that's another option that you'll have, is putting together facial features to create a new face. So either create a fruit, vegetable creature, or a new face. And there are some different instructions for each of those. And then in also inside of exercise five, the Photoshop instructions, for the assignment where you have the choice to do human faces or fruits and sorts. If you do both, you can get extra credit. Any questions about that so far? I'm going to move my exercise five folder onto my hard drive. It's a lot easier. I mean, it's on my downloads, but I want to get organized, so I'm going to go to my other finder window to get to where I'm storing everything for the for this class. So it's a good idea to just put your folder of the week in your own folder for the class on your hard drive. So I'm going to do that now. 
and then I'm going to open up the assignment from from on the PDF file. So now it's open in Acrobat. Please disregard where it says look in class files, if you can make a note of that. This is just, this should mean look on Canvas and get your get your materials for exercise five in your exercise five folder from Canvas. And you know, these, so the, this top little two lines of instructions, please disregard. Just skip to look at all the images and decide which one you might combine to create a new face. Um, so either um, either human faces or fruits and sorts or you may choose to create a face or not only a face you could do a whole creature I should say with the fruits and sorts images and for extra credit you can do both. Um, there are a few more specific instructions of, um, about each of these whether you choose to do the human faces or the fruits and sorts. So for the human faces, you're just going to be choosing one image for the head. And that will encompass, that will include the background of the image as well. Um, and another image for the eyes, another image for the nose, and another image for the mouth. So you'll be you'll be cutting out the eyes, nose, and mouth and moving them onto the head image and then fine-tuning them with different methods that I'll show to make it look as real as possible, as natural as possible. Um, there are going to be a few extra steps on this part if you're doing the human faces that I'll go over in, in more detail than is is listed here in the instructions so if you're going to do human faces make sure to take good notes for that part where I talk about cropping and resampling to six by six inches at 200 pixels per inch and then resampling to 700 pixels per inch that's a little could be a little confusing this part and that's only if you're doing the human faces Moving on to fruits and sorts, you don't have to do these steps on fruits and sorts. With fruits and sorts, you can put together any of the the images to create a creature, and then in the end, um, you're going to search for a background image and drag the creature into the background image. So a little bit different for finalizing on fruits and sorts than finalizing on human faces. Okay, but I'll be going into the details on that step by step. Um, let me just go ahead and show you a few examples. So let me go get my OC. <clears throat> Examples. Okay, so here's one who did um, the human faces. Any questions so far? Okay, I've got my workspace for painting, but now we're going to be doing... Um, we're just photo manipulation. Like so let me just switch my workspace to be ready for um, working more with photos rather than painting. I don't need all this paint, all these paint panels up. So I'll just go to window workspace and maybe I'll just go with essentials for Photoshop. And um, you can see the different layers here. Layer for an eye, another eye. It's always good to label your layers. This student did not really label her layers. But good practice in staying organized is labeling. But you can see how basically she's replaced, she's covered up the, the features of the original head with all new features 
and it looks pretty believable because everything is blended nicely and um, color color corrected so we'll learn about all of that all those techniques okay and this one is an example of fruits and sorts creature here Oops. the eggplant man and i love the background that he chose with the eggplant man because they match so well this looks this has the look of some kind of 3d animation kind of pixar kind of dreamworks or something um he sliced the late the eggplant at an angle as his method to make it really look like this eggplant is seamlessly interwoven into this scene. Very clever. Um, so it looks like he's sitting behind the desk. And that's something that we're going to be talking about more for the project. When, you, we, when I assign you the project, it's going to be... Um, the goal of the project is going to be to choose um, an environment... A place and choose a subject and and the, the challenge is to seamlessly interweave the subject into the place so if if you're you know eager to choose your own images I would work on choosing images of places and choosing images of subjects that you might superimpose into a place to tell a new story so he's got in this in this example here, he's got eggplant man sitting at this desk in an office. So already this image tells a new story um, than what the original what the original context of each image that he brought in together and in combination. Uh, all these images, their original meaning has changed. Just this, you know, original meaning of just the eggplant. It's just an eggplant, okay? But now combining all of that imagery together has created a creature, and then putting the creature uh, sitting at the desk, now it tells a whole new story. Just lets the imagination run, and you think, okay, who is this eggplant man? Well, what kind of job does he have, and what is this? What's going on? <laughs> um so uh it you know they say uh what's that saying a picture is tells a thousand words is that the say help me out yeah. people <laughs> so yeah so that's the idea of what you're going to be doing with the project is to create an, an a new image for, um from images that you find and piece together to and together those the new images that their original meaning changes and tells a new story so but for this for this week it's all going to be all about just using the images I provide to sharpen your skills with um, making selections around imagery cutting imagery out Moving ima an image to an into another image, um, making everything look very clean and um, and really sharpening your skills to to create a new original image from from found images. All right. So then I have another example of if. If you want to do the extra credit, here's an example of someone who did the extra credit. They did both the fruits and sorts. And he's even got some painting in there. So creature floating in outer space above the earth. Very cool. And then his human face. This is together and combined in one PDF, which I like for... I'd like you to do if you're going to do the extra credit is just turn in one PDF that combines both images. And then we have, whoa, this is a scary, scary um, Juanes, the rock star. 
<laughs> well, it was Juanes. Now it's a scary monster guy. So, um, so that's the extra credit. All right. Okay. So, um, what would you guys like to see me demonstrate first? Human faces or fruits and sorts creatures? Creature. <clears throat> human, face. Uh, human face, okay. Okay, yeah, that's usually what is requested. Okay, let's go with, with human faces. All right, so um, I'm going to click on Finder because I'm on a Mac. And I'm going to click on human faces. Oops, I'm not going to do it. This is from my external drive. I'll go to my hard drive of my computer instead and I'm gonna go to my folder for this class where I copied exercise 5 folder and I'm gonna click on human faces there and I'm gonna switch to icon view and then I can stretch this out and and I can adjust the size of my icons and then I can I can kind of see an overall view of everything here of what's all here let me see if I can get them all to fit in so I'm going to right click and clean up by name and more can fit in the window okay do you guys see um, any that I sh that you would think would be good to use for the head the overall head Just do a ring. Feel free to shout out ideas. What do you guys want to see for the head? No preference? Okay, I'm going to choose this one. Soccer guy. Okay, well, any preference on the eyes? Maybe uh, old guy laughing. This righteous guy, righteous brother. brother. Yeah. Okay, for the eyes. All right. I'm just gonna let's see, command click to highlight them. What about the nose? Any anyone have any um, preference for the nose? Feel free to make, give me a challenge. Maybe boy glasses. Okay, good. And then we need, we got the eyes, we got the nose, we need the mouth. Anyone? Face five. Oh, that's a good one, people. That's a challenging one. All right, so I got, so we're choosing four faces for this, for human faces. And, um... One way you could do this is you could select them all like I just did in Finder and drag them to the Photoshop icon on the um, on the dock if you're on a Mac. So I could, for example, I'll just choose one though for this. I'll just drag it to Photoshop and be careful not to wait too long because you don't want Photoshop to pop up because you could accidentally do this incorrectly but and you want to make sure you go to the to the icon not into Photoshop so to the icon there you go nope it didn't work that time because it popped up so you do it you have to do it kind of quickly so I'm gonna just take whoop just gonna take the guy and drag him to Photoshop like that and then yeah you have to do it quickly before Photoshop pops up or it's a little messy so I prefer not to do it that way because it can be a little bit
fiddly. So I'm going to just go instead, I'm going to go File, Open. You could also browse your images in Bridge before. Let's try that. So let's go File, Browse in Bridge, because that might be a better way for everyone. Well, okay, so now I'm in Bridge, and I can go to um, my favorites here, but I want to go, let's see, where would you like to access files? Okay. Okay, we'll let it access those. Okay, and then I need to go to my... my media drive so here I'm on folders I go to my media drive and then I go to my um, I could flip open the media drive from this column so that I can go to my the folder that I want to go to from there and I want to go to our folder so I could I see it here so I can double click it and then in exercise five, I can double click that. And then I can double click human faces. So that's another way that you can preview all of your, the faces. And then I could, I, I have this slider at the bottom. I can drag up to see everything better. And then let's see. So we want this one here. So let's see what happens if I double click on it so that's a way to get it in Photoshop I don't I don't I haven't used bridge very often so that's kind of that's this is a nice way to get your images into Photoshop is to is to preview them in bridge and then you can double click on the ones that you want and then they open into into Photoshop but another way is to, let me go back into Photoshop if you prefer, if you don't like to use Bridge or you don't have access to Bridge, I don't know. Um, I've got these two images open, then I, I could also go File, Open, not Place. Uh, and also you want to not do this. You don't want to go like this. You don't want to go, if you're on a Mac, in Finder, or if you're on Windows, you don't want to have your um, folder window open, and then and then grab an image. We said we want the boy, right? Let's say we, we want, what you don't want to do is, you don't want to take an image from, like, the Finder window or folder window and drag it to an image in Photoshop like this. Don't do that. Because that's not opening the image in Photoshop. We want to open all the images as separate files or separate documents in Photoshop. But what I just did when I dragged the image to an image that's already open is I placed it. We're going to learn about placing later. And it's um, and then if I were to press return to apply that place or click on the check mark up above, which I did, now it's it's brought it in as a separate layer that's a smart object layer which is something we're going to learn later so i i don't want you to do it that way so avoid dragging and dropping images into images because that's just going to make your life a lot more complicated if you don't know already about smart objects and it's going to get it's going to be me a messier way to work if you do it that way. So don't do it that way. I'm just going to throw this layer in the trash so that you want to have images tabbed together like this and each image only has one background layer that's locked. That's how it should look. So when you drag an image to the Photoshop icon on the dock if you're on a Mac, that should work, but to open the image but you can also go file open or command O and you can choose the image that this way from the pop-up finder so 
and I'm looking for our folder for the class and exercise five and human faces and from Finder, you can also switch out of, right now I'm in column view, you can also switch to icon view. You won't get to make the icons bigger, but at least you can see all the images all at once. So this is just another way to do it. So what do I have in here? I got soccer and I got her and I need the boy. So I can choose the boy and the Righteous Brother guy, right? Let's see, where is Righteous Brother? There he is. So I'm just gonna command click those two and then I can click open. So they all are open now. All four images are open. They're all tabbed together. So I decided that the face was gonna be this guy and she was gonna be the mouth and he's going to be the nose and he's going to be the eyes. Okay. I also want to have, I'm going to go back to um, my exercise five folder because I want to open up the, the, do I have, do I have the assignment open? I think I do. I want to also open up the, the Photoshop handout that's called selection tools. It's PS tools and methods. It'll say selection tools at the top, selection tools of Photoshop. So I'll start with this first tool. We're, the, fir the first four pages of this handout are all about tools that allow you to make selections around parts of images. And when I say selections, I mean the marching ant selections. Like you may um, have remembered that I did with the marquee tools when I was dropping in paint dropping in paint bucket or a gradient into um, areas that are selected within marching ants. So this, these tools the, on the first four pages, they're all tools that allow you to make marching ants that let you affect only what's within those marching ants. And they also allow you to cut pixels out of images so that you can move those pixels or those parts of images to a new image to create your own unique image. The last page, page 505, is going to give you some tools and methods on, on altering the image, on changing the size or changing the colors or, and there's also tools that we're going to be talking about um, the, mainly the cloning tool today we'll talk about. We'll talk more about healing tools in a later exercise probably. Um, and then the adjustment feature for changing the colors, color correcting. So that's that's what's on page five. But everything else I'm going to go through is about using the tools to make selections or to select areas of an image. So I'm going to start with the quick mask mode um, feature in Photoshop. And I'm going to get into one of the most famous selection tools in Photoshop, the lasso tool. But let's start with using quick mask mode. So the quick mask button is located at the bottom of your toolbar. And that well, that can be used with, that will be used with the paintbrush to create a selection. So right now we're in standard mode. When I click on the quick mask button down here, it's like a rectangle with a circle in it, or you can press Q to get to it. Now I'm in, I'm in quick mask mode. So some things look a little different, like the layers lit up in a strange way that things look a little different. It's like we're in the twilight zone now. Things work a little differently. Also notice when I'm in quick mask mode, what's different about the foreground and the background color? Here, let me go back to standard. You can get back to standard mode by clicking the button again. And now see the colors that I have on standard are my whatever color I choose for my foreground and my background so when I choose the um, paintbrush here let me choose a more standard paintbrush 
So I could go into general brushes and choose just like a soft brush or a hard brush. And then, so if I were to paint on this image, I would be painting in green paint. I'm going to undo that. Or whatever color I click on here, like I, let's say I make a, it blue, I would be painting with blue paint. Okay, but I don't want to paint with blue paint, so I'm going to go to my history panel, which there's a little button for here, or I could go to a window and find a history in alphabetical order and bring it up and go back in time by clicking up the history before I started scribbling on my um, work there, on my photo. And then we saw last time with the with the marquee tools, right, like rectangular or elliptical, when you draw marching ants and then you take your paintbrush and you start painting, the paint is only going to work, is only going to affect inside of the marching ant. Thank goodness for history. I want to get back out of that. Okay, so that's marching ants. So you can click outside to deselect or hit Command D to deselect or Control D on Windows. Um, when I make a selection like this with the marquee tool and then I go to quick mask mode it changes the selection to be the area that's unmasked and everywhere else is um, is, is defined as masked which is much like when you, um, how painters work. So when painters want to paint a very straight line, they, what do they put down on their canvas? Any, any painters in here? A, a ruler could be one thing, but let's say you just want to throw paint all over your canvas and then you want to have certain areas, like you want a border that's a nice, clean, straight edge border all around. What? Tape, tape, tape. right. Like masking tape, right? So they use special yeah. art tape that's like masking tape, but it does what, ma like the hence the the name masking tape so that's exactly what hap what we have here when we're just looking at the view of this image um, with the selection instead of the selection is within the marching ants the selection is the unmasked area and everything else is masked it cannot be it cannot be touched um, when you go to standard mode, you see how that works when you're painting through the marching ants and nothing else is affected except what's within the marching ants. But the purpose of going into mask mode is really to redefine the selection edge. So, and you can edit that selection edge with the paintbrush tool to do a more freeform mask. Right now, my um, I've, you see that I've got this green tint over everything, and that's not because of any green color that I had in my foreground or background color. That's just what my mask, my mask mode options are set to, because the last time I changed it to green. But normally, by default, your mask should probably be red by default. The ruby lith mask color, that's the standard color for mask for um, what's considered masked, the masked area. So I'm going to just double click on my mask mode button now. And it went into standard mode now. But now you have these quick mask options that where the color can be on the masked area, which is the default setting, or it can be over the selected area if you prefer. And my color is set to green. Normally it would be some kind of some set to red, but there's a lot of red already in this image, so maybe I'll set it to blue. Green was fine. Anyway, we'll see what it looks like set to blue. And the opacity of the mask can be altered. I'll leave it at 50%. And then when I go to quick mask mode now, you see there's like a blue tint over everything. 
and the colors are no longer the the foreground and background colors are no longer paint colors they are just um black versus white which me which has new meaning it's just whatever's when you're painting with black you're painting um think of yours that you're painting what's what will show as transparency and when you're painting with white you're painting what will show as opacity if that makes sense but you don't really have to worry about this right now um but if i take my paintbrush and i were to to paint through this i'm redefining the shape of my selection if I swap these so that the white is on top and then I paint, now I'm, I'm actually um, <clears throat> painting in more of the selected area. Because in the end, whatever's inside of the selected areas, these are the pixels that we're going to be taking from this image to, the, to another image at full opacity. When I paint with black, I'm defining what I'm what I'm cutting away so I could just paint around this eye like this and decide what uh, what part of the eye I want you can also use your eraser keep in mind if you oh my eraser opacity is set very low I want to bring it all the way so you could also erase uh, also, keep in mind that if you use a soft brush, either on it, the eraser or on the um, on the paintbrush. So if I choose a soft brush and I am painting here, or or with the eraser, I erase with a soft brush, um, then I'm gonna have that soft edge, which. It will be. It will actually benefit me for for the faces to to have a softer edge. But I'm just gonna uh, leave this edge here hard, so we see the difference of of what will happen when I move my pixels to another image. I'm gonna go back now. So I've used my paintbrush and my eraser, and also played with swapping painting with black or painting with white back and forth and now I'm just going to click um, the quick mask button again or press Q to get back to standard mode and it redefines the selection so that's the purpose of working in quick mask just to redefine the selection now I can next I would go to my move tool the tool at the top right there and click and hover inside of my marching ants and you'll see a you'll see um, um like a arrow head like a move tool with a pair of scissors icon there that might that means you're in the right place if you're on a selection tool like if i was on my elliptical marquee and then i hover over it will let me move my selection, but it won't let me move pixels. When I go to the move tool, in order to move pixels, you have to be on the move tool because you'll see the scissors. That means you're gonna physically just grab all the pixels inside of this selection and move them to another image. So my destination is soccer guy. So I'm going from righteous brother and I'm gonna drag the righteous brother's eye to the soccer player. And notice I left a lot of skin area around the eye. You want to do that so you have a, you have more to work with when you go to blend and make things look more natural. So I'm just gonna drag this up to the tab that says soccer and drag down. I did not release my mouse until I hover over the image, then I'm going to release my finger off of the mouse and now I've successfully moved the eye into the destination. And now you can see how, because I painted with a soft brush on one side, it's feathering, it feathered the image on that side and um, you can see the image is hard edged on the other side. 
Okay, I'm going to leave that there for now and go back to the Righteous Brother image again and I'll show you another method of doing this starting with the lasso tool. So there's my lasso tool. There's a little animation that pops up to show you how you use it. So it's just a, like a free form drawing tool to draw in your own selection as opposed to um, starting with an elliptical marquee. I'm going to use the lasso tool this time to to draw in another selection. And I can click outside with the lasso tool to deselect an existing selection. Also, when you're on the lasso tool, check out what the options are on the in the control panel. I like anti-alias to be checked because that gives you kind of a smoother look, smooths the edge transition is what it's saying it does, which is exactly what it does. It makes the pixels look smoother and finer as opposed to chunkier edged pixels. So I like that. And then, um, so I'm just gonna draw around this eye by just clicking and dragging and drawing and giving a, a lot of area around the eye, even including the eyebrow. Now, let's say, I'm gonna zoom in with Command Plus and I'm using my spacebar to move around to toggle into my hand tool. Now let's say I went a little too close to the eyebrow. If I want to make a change to my selection with the lasso tool, if I start redrawing, it'll make I'll I'll lose the existing selection. So let's say I start or oh well now I'm moving it. Okay, let's say I start drawing. Now I just erase the previous selection. So I'm gonna use Command Z to undo. But if I just want to add to the selection, I could either go up here to the the um, add to selection button, or if I hold down on the shift key, I toggle into the add selection button. So now I'm holding shift, and you see a little plus appear next to my tool. So when I'm, as long as I'm holding shift or if I'm on the add button, then when I draw, I'm not going to re be starting over with a new selection and remove the previous selection. It's just going to add to it. So I'm holding shift and I'm just going to draw a new edge here and then I would lasso around the old edge or loop. loop it's making a loop, but literally it's lassoing and the lasso pulls out the old edge into the new edge. The same thing if I went too far here on the cheek and I didn't want to go out that far, and I want to redefine the edge if I want to, to subtract from the selection, I could either go to the subtract from selection mode or I can hold down the Option key, or that would be the Alt key on Windows, but Option on a Mac to toggle into the Subtract mode. So while I'm holding Option, I just click and drag to draw a new edge, and then I lasso around the old edge, and it snaps the old edge in. So now I'm happy with my selection. I could. If you want to use quick mask mode, you could always click to uh, on quick mask button, and then you see how you could um, you can use your paintbrush and alter the edge a little bit here and there. Or I can swap. You can press X to swap from white on top to, and then I'll be you know. Then I'll be adding to my selection when I have white on top or press X again. Now it's black on top and then I'll be subtracting from my selection. So I just feathered that side again. If I, if I go to uh, a hard brush though, oops, let me press X and that's hardening the edge there. Okay, um, and then I go back to standard mode. I click the button or I can press the Q key. Now I'm back on standard mode and oh, maybe I want to add to the selection. I can press um, Q to get to quick mask and I can add to my selection there. And if I want to soften, soften that, I can go to the soft brush and I can soften an part of the edge there. 
You might want to soften all the way around, but I just want to show you just partially soften there. And then press Q again to get out of quick mask mode. Now we're in standard mode. Or you could, I could have clicked the button, the quick mask button. Then I take my move tool and I, and I see the, the scissors and then I drag from inside of the marching ants up to my destination image. So I drag up to the tab, the image pops up, I drag down into the image and then I release my mouse. So you see it's soft edge over there and the edges of the pixels here are defined by the settings for the lasso tool. Okay, then we go to, um, let's try, let's get the mouth here. Okay, so I'm going to go with the um, lasso tool. This time just to show you a, the difference between the way the edges of the pixels look. For the lasso tool, I'm going to uncheck anti-alias just so you see. And I'm going to draw roughly around the mouth. And then I'm going to take my move tool, drag up to the soccer image, down and drop in. Now let's take a look. At the difference you see the difference between when anti-alias was unchecked how the the edges of the pixels are chunky and jagged as opposed to the smooth fine pixel transition on the edge of what was set as with a with um, anti-alias was checked wait so let me go back to the lasso tool you have those that anti-alias option when you check that it smooths the edges of your pixels so I'm gonna go back let's go back to the boy the boy we're getting his nose right okay so we take the um, lasso tool lasso tool is a good one for for this and I, this time I'm going to check anti-alias, but I'm going to do something else. Notice also with lasso, there's a feather option here. So you could put a number of, of pixels that you want to feather. So let's say I want to feather all around five pixels. And then I'm going to draw around the nose. And it's okay that if, if I get the glasses in there, I can take them out later. And just kind of drawing around the nose and closing off there and then I'm gonna just take my move tool and drag the nose up to the soccer image you can see how it softens the edges let's see oh this is a big one so you can see because I had feathers selected it softened the edge all the way around Okay, so now we need to um, scale things down, get things ready. So the eye, so this is where you use page five, the last page, to start altering your images. So um, the, there's a little bit about feathering there. You can also go to up to select modify feather. select um, when you have like when you have a selection here so you can go to select and then modify and there are different options and one of them is feather it's another way feather and then you can put in the number of pixels there but but it the option was already there with the lasso tool so I didn't have to do that and um, what I want to talk about is using the transform feature. So you can go to edit, transform, but command T is the shortcut on a Mac, control T on Windows. So this will allow you to do a lot of different various transformations. So I'm going to go to my soccer picture here. And this may be a good time to save this. So, um, well, it's already a Photoshop, file, but you're some chances are you you're you working with a jpeg so when you go file save here i'm going to cancel this let's do file save as just to, because you don't want to overwrite the original save on your computer 
and then um, you can name this your last name followed by your first initial dash Oops. the protocol for saving would be the abbreviation for this would be EX5 and I'm just going to put this Oops. I'm going to put this in my folder. And if the format should be Photoshop. Save. Okay. So here I'm going to start with this eye here. And I might want to just rename it. Double click and I'll just call it left eye. It's my left. And then I'm going to hit I'm going to go to, uh, if you could go to edit, and then this is where you get to the transform option. So you can choose transform and choose any of these transformations. Um, or you could go just above that to free transform, and the, and the shortcut is command T on a, command T on a Mac, control T on Windows. So now what can I do? I can rotate, I can scale. You don't have to hold shift in Photoshop when you're scaling pixels. That's kind of a new thing that Photoshop made a change about that. Um, another thing that's helpful is to um, is to bring down the opacity. Sorry about the dog barking. I hope it's not too loud. Oops, I think I accidentally double clicked so it applied my transformation. But I'm bringing, I selected the, I had the layer selected and I brought down the opacity. And then I can see the original eye underneath so I can line up the, the iris, the irises so that I can get a more realistic look and size. I'll bring up the opacity again and I can hit command T again. Oops, I just have that layer selected. Hit command T and then I have my transformation box and I can scale it. And let me bring down the opacity for the layer from the top of the layer panel and just kind of adjust. I want to zoom in with command plus. Just to make sure, let's see, to kind of line up the edges of the, the iris. Okay, I think that's good. Okay, and then I can press return when I've got it. Wait, let me just make sure that yeah, so I think that looks like it's lined up. I can press return or click on the check mark there to apply that. And then then you want to color correct. So, but uh, I think to save some time, I'm going to um, have both of the eye layers, the eyes on one layer and color correct them together. So let me just get this other one situated. Command T on this eye and this other eye and rotating it, bringing down the opacity, scaling it down so that the iris is match. All right, so that looks pretty good. And then I'll just bring up the opacity again and press return, return again to apply that. Actually, this eye looks a little too big still. Command T, scale it down a little bit, bring the opacity down to check here. Yeah, that looks better, right? And then bring it 
up and press return, return twice. And now I can, um, one looks a little big, but it, your eyes are not always going to be the same. Maybe slightly smaller, huh? So, um, it's the time that the class is scheduled for. Uh, I'm going to continue the lesson until about 9. So you're welcome to stay for the live lesson or watch it later on video. Okay, I'm going to go with that. Bring up the opacity. Press return. Okay, that looks good. So then I'm going to, I'll just merge, I'll just, I'm going to merge both of these together. Um, the two layers, I've highlighted them, the two eye layers. And I'm just going to go to the flyout menu on the layers panel and choose merge layers. And then I'll just rename this one by double clicking, I'll call this eyes. So you might want to keep your eyes separate. <laughs> I'm just merging them so that it's quicker to, to color correct. Okay, so then I'm going to go to to color correct. This is also on your last page of your handout. The image adjustment feature. I'm going to go to image adjustments. So while I have that layer highlighted, the eyes layer, I'm going to go to image adjustments and I'm going to work first on getting the lights and darks and contrast right. So you could use any of these for that, these top ones, but I personally like levels. So I'm going to do levels. And so with levels, you have input levels and you have output levels. So the input levels allow you to adjust the shadows and midtones together here, or just the midtones can be adjusted or just the highlights can be adjusted. Well, actually, when I'm dragging on the highlights, it's adjusting the highlights and the midtones together. But it allows me to just adjust my midtones by themselves. Uh, down here with output levels, when I drag the light, the slider on the right down, it's darkening everything up, dimming everything down together. When I drag the slider on the left, towards the middle, it's lightening everything together as opposed to these top three It's kind of just working on more adjusting the contrast a little bit separate adjusting each of the the shadows, midtones and highlights more separate so what I want to do is I want to look at the colors in the face and try to match the contrast and the, the, the brightness in the highlights and the darkness in the shadows. I want to match that to what I, what, to the eye. So um, on the soccer player's face, there's not so much, the dr shadows are a lot less dramatic than the shadows in the eyes here. So I want to work on softening that so that I have less contrast without making it too bright or too dark and without adjusting so that the image gets loses quality so let's see I think maybe the output levels could help me out here because yeah because I need less contrast. Probably there. And when things are starting to work, you know because you start to lose the seam a little bit. The seams start to disappear. Let's see what this looks like before. So I'm going to click preview, check before. See, you see a starker um, seams. And then check on and things are maybe going down a little bit. Let's see. Let me just adjust it a little bit here this way. 
Yeah, so more, less, less contrasty. That's what we're going for here. Before, see this stark seam there? And after it softens that seam. And we say, okay. So that's adjusting the levels. Ooh. He needs to put some cucumbers on his eyes or something. Okay, so next um, we address color. The color actually looks similar, but I think there's more yellow in the eyes than there are on the soccer player's face. Maybe, maybe not. It's very similar. Maybe a little, I think the main thing was the contrast for this one, but maybe it's a little more warm. Could just do a little bit of an adjustment. So, okay, so I'm gonna go to, um, yeah, maybe I could bring down the yellow a little bit cause, and bring, yeah, for the eyes, that there's a lot of yellow in the eyes and maybe a little less yellow in the face. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Image, Adjustments again, and this time I'm going to choose Color Balance. So with Color Balance, you can um, adjust the midtones separately from the shadows, separately from the highlights. So midtones are selected. So I'm looking at the midtones. I'm not looking at where there are shadows or where there are highlights at this point. I'm just kind of looking at the in-between color and trying to match the color in the eyes to the color on the face. So I'm going to try bringing down the yellow, which is the same as adding blue because blue is the opposite of yellow and we're talking about color as light. So when, if I crank it up too high, then I'm going to make I'm going to go make his the eyes look blue, which I don't want. I just want to neutralize. So just enough to kind of neutralize without seeing actual blue come into the image. So bringing down the yellow. Um, it's probably what I want mainly. And then so let's see in the shadows. Let's look at the shadows now. There are a lot. There's a lot of red in the shadows on the eyes and maybe less red in the shadows on the um, on the face so I'm going to go to shadows and try to match the shadows in the eyes so maybe I, I'll bring down the red by dragging the red slider towards the cyan the opposite of red would be cyan so in the shadows I'm bringing down the red neutralizing the red and going towards the Cyan, not too far, just enough so that the colors of the shadows in the face kind of match the shadows on the eyes. Okay, that's working. And then um, the highlights. So click on highlights here. And now I'm going to look at his highlights and then look at the highlights in this image. So maybe, probably it's a matter of bringing down the yellow just a little bit by adding just a touch of blue. See if I go too far. I don't want to go too far because his highlights have a little yellow in them so I don't want to go too far on the highlights. I want if I go negative I'm adding yellow if I go positive I'm actually adding blue and, and subtract and bringing down the yellow okay so that's good I'll just say okay and finally now the finessing the the way to blend one one very important way to blend is simply to use the eraser so you can take your eraser tool and use a soft brush. Make sure your brush is soft. Um, the, the hardness is set to 0%. 
and um, you could also bring down the opacity so that you erase in in smaller amounts and let me just adjust the size of my eraser I'm using my bracket keys and I'm just gonna kind of paint while I have the eyes layer select I'm just painting to remove in layers and like in little by little to kind of blend but you could bring up the eraser to 100% to start with and then you can when you want to blend skin into skin then you can bring the opacity down like if you want a little bit of the er the skin texture from the the eyes to stay you can bring down the opacity but I think we don't really need we don't really need all these extra little laugh lines he can keep his youth intact the way it was but you can decide do you want to keep the eyebrows of the face or have the eyebrows of the the eyes override the eyebrows on the face that's up to you you can Let's say, let's say I want to keep the eyebrows on the face, so I erase more on the eyes. And then it becomes more believable. And then as I get closer and closer to the edges of the eyes, then I want to go bring down my opacity on my brush and just kind of erase in steps here and there to blend skin into skin. I could also bring down the opacity on the eyes just to see the originals again and just kind of blend skin into skin. Let's see. I'm going to turn off the eye there. Now if you see some eye showing underneath, let me just zoom in here. So if I started erasing too much, um, on the eye here, then I might start to see some of the the eye underneath show through. And maybe I don't want that. So then in that case, I'd have to highlight the background. And if I just want skin, this is going to be a little, a little morbid, but I'm going to um, put some skin over the guy's eye. You do that with the clone to down tool which is also um, information about that is also on page 5 of your handout about the clone stamp tool so you can take your clone stamp tool looks like a stamp it's the, cl the one on top of the two tools and you highlight whatever layer you want to clone and it's set to working with just the current layer but you could set it to be able to sample um, other layers, current and below, or all layers, but I'm just interested in working on this current layer, so I have it on current layer, and I've got the background layer selected, and I've got my clone stamp tool selected, and then what I need to do is I need to hold down the Option key on a Mac or Alt on Windows, and click, hold, as soon as I hold Option, you'll see a target, and then you can Option click, to set the target of what you want to clone and then you paint and see the little plus that's trailing my paintbrush it's um wherever the plus is is trailing that's those are the pixels that it's pulling so i if if the plus moves in a place i don't want i can hold option and reset it to a different area click and now it's trailing from farther away so i can option click so I can um, keep resetting it so option click and so I can keep painting now let's say I was painting and then you know after a while it might start painting something that you don't want like if I were over here option click and then I start painting now I'm painting the ear because that's where the plus is. I'm going to undo that. Actually, I'm going to go back with my history a few steps here. 
to there. So I just wanted to cover up that little part of the eye there because it was showing underneath the eyes here. Oh, but now I think I went a little too far. Hold on a second here. Let me go back to there. So that's, that's all right. Okay, so, but I was just showing you how if something underneath is showing, then you might want to clone it. But I think it looks fine like that, this, to this point. Also, at any point, if your system's kind of bogging down from your history panel, you can, um, you can clear history and then it won't retain all the steps of everything that you've done and then it kind of smooths smooths out your workflow it speeds up the system okay so now the eyes look pretty good now there's the mouth let me name this mouth and the nose name this layer nose okay so the mouth and on my on my move tool by the way I have auto select checked so that I can just click on any layer and it's automatically selected okay so the mouth I'm gonna do the same thing maybe bring down the opacity to try to match this mouth with his mouth and I think I need to hit command T and rotate it a little bit rotate just hovering outside the bounty box I want it to be more straight with his position of his head and scale it maybe let's see to look like it fits the size of the face or oh, that's a little too small okay, go up. that could work Bringing down the opacity. Okay, I'll go with that. And then I'll press return, return again. And so it's super bright. The skin is kind of blown out on this image. So I'm gonna start by going to image, adjustments, and levels. And there's, with adjusting the input levels, it's it changes the contrast um, I don't really need to change the contrast so it's the output levels that would help me so as I adjust the the lights the lighter slider down that's dimming everything down but I don't let's see maybe maybe I need a combination so let's see I dim down a little bit and then just maybe we do need a little bit more a little contrast here this is a challenging one but it's probably as good as I can get it Maybe more. Let's see if we go more. And just do some fine tune adjusting here. Okay, so that kind of dims down. The skin tone there so I'll say okay there and then we definitely need to work on color here so I'm gonna go to image adjustments again color balance and we're working on the midtone so I could bring up the reds a little bit there we go on the midtones to match kind of the red in his skin more and Maybe bring up the yellow a little bit, but bring some color back into skin here. And shadows, 
maybe add a little bit of red in the shadows too. And see then the seam starts to disappear so then you know you're on the right track. And in the shadows, let's see. I guess that's good for shadows. Let's see then highlights, looking at his highlights. Maybe I want some more yellow in the highlights. Yeah, I think that's helping. Okay, so then I'll say okay there. And then I want to use my eraser and erase my soft brush. Erase, oops, am I on the right layer here? Oh, I've got my opacity way down. I'm going to bring up the opacity on the eraser. Maybe make the eraser larger. Kind of paint, paint, paint around. Maybe smaller now. The bracket keys. And now I'm seeing more of his mouth showing through. So here I see part of his mouth showing there. So I could turn off this mouth and go over to his, let's see, let's bring this back up. Then I could go to his mouth and be on the background layer and then use my clone to hold down option and I get the target and I click and then I paint and you can choose what level of hardness and size for your brush with your clones down I'm just painting over that or I can reset where I'm painting where I'm cloning from there and then turn the mouth back on. So now we don't have that showing there. I think I erased a little too much of the mouth though. So now I did, I did it again. Too bad I can't keep my cloning. And then still, let's see, go back to eraser, go higher up there before I erased that much of the mouth. Let's see, go back. Just turning off the mouth and then go back to clone the background real quick. Option click and then just clone a little bit there. And I'll turn the mouth back on. And then I'll just erase a little bit more on the mouth while I have the mouth highlighted. And erase a little bit more on the mouth. There we go. What a lovely little mouth there. Okay. Finally, the nose. So let me grab the nose and Command T to transform, dragging from the corners to scale and not holding shift. And again, I could bring down the opacity on the nose layer to kind of adjust or size it so that it fits edge to edge. Bring up the opacity again to see how it's looking. All right, maybe a little bigger. That looks pretty funny. <laughs> okay, so then um, I guess I double clicked so that applied that, that transformation. So then I'm going to take my eraser and erase the nose. Well, before I do, before I erase, I forgot. I want to first go to image adjustments and get the levels right. Input levels. So I'm looking at the contrast, the lights and the darks in the nose and trying to match to what I see in the face, which is pretty similar, I think. Maybe there's a seam here. So I could adjust that a little brighter so it looks like it blends a little better. There, so the seam is going away, that's good. Maybe just adjust the contrast a little on the mid-tones. Okay. 
play with the input out the output level maybe you could no I think that's good the way it is all right so I'm gonna say okay there and then maybe add some more color I think the face has more warm tones more orange or more red so I'm gonna go back image adjustments and color balance and then we're working on the midtones to start with. Bring up the reds. That's good for the let's see reds. Well, reds are for mainly maybe the shadows more, but a little bit of reds in the midtones. Let's see what else is in midtones. Maybe some more yellow in the midtones. And then going to the shadows. Bring up the reds in the shadows, and then highlights. Um, let's see, his his highlights might have a little more red and a little more yellow, just slightly. And I say okay there, and then I take my eraser and I erase the glasses off and I can erase in, in steps here the skin bring down the opacity to erase in steps and if I wanted his nose to be cloned on top of this little glasses bridge then I can just take my clone and um, option click here and then paint over it a little bit. Option click. Option click. If I want to be able to paint the skin from the guy on top of the nose, instead of just having current layer as my sampling layer, I could choose current and below or all layers let's try current and below so then I can option click over here and then paint a little of the guy's skin on top and that went on the nose but then I'm going to go back to my eraser and just erase with I brought my opacity down just kind of smooth things out a little bit here Now uh, there's this hard shadow here, so I could probably use the clone stamp to soften that up. So I'm going to take the clone stamp and change it back to current layer to just work on the nose. And then option click and then I can paint with my opacity down with my clone stamp too just to kind of lighten things up a little bit, soften that hard shadow. That's probably good. Or maybe I want a little bit more of this shadow, so option click here. Bring in this shadow. Actually, this would be, this shadow is coming from the guy. So if I want a little of the guy's shadow on top of the nose, and I go back to current and below, and option click here, and then I can paint a little more of that shadow in. There we go. I feel like the nose should be rotated a little, so I hit Command T, rotate it just a little bit. There we go. Press Return. Okay, <laughs> so that's kind of that's a, that's a funny one. All right. Um, probably want to clone out the. I guess mustache line there a little bit so it so I could go to the guy layer and it's I could set it back to current option click and then paint to soften that mustache there and here oops I think I got a little 
something there that I didn't want. Okay, so that's good. That looks much better. Actually, the nose is looking a little too bright now. So I'm going to go back to image, adjustments, and maybe levels and try uh, dimming it down a little bit here. Maybe output. Yeah, I think output. There we go. Much better. So this was before, this is after, and it blends better. I'll say okay there. Okay, so finally the the steps that um that need a little bit of note taking. I'm gonna save this. Okay, so what needs to be done to finalize um the human faces. Oops. Uh oh, I have this open twice. No wait. No I don't. Okay, so this is this is the assignment here. So for finalizing, if you're doing human faces, then there are these steps here that say when you're done, crop and resample the image to six inches by six inches at 200 pixels per inch. And then you resample again in a different way at 72 pixels per inch by going to image, image size. Okay, so this is what that looks like. So we, we first choose the crop tool which is under the lasso tool <clears throat> and by default it should just be a freeform crop where you can just freeform and crop in by dragging but we want to constrain the crop so to do that there are options here on top you can click the drop down and choose width by height by resolution and here you put in six it's already in there for me six inches by six inches you can type that in um, by 200 pixels per inch. So now I can't really, I can't um, crop disproportionately. It's always going to be six by six and I can just, I can move up and down like that. You don't want to have probably the background color showing in there. So just keep the image background. You can scale it down and it'll still constrain it to 6 inches by 6 inches at 200 pixels per inch, however you do it. Notice it gives you a rule of thirds grid. So you've got good framing as long as you have the intersections on the important imagery. Like he, they're on the face, so that's good framing. And you just decide do you want more headroom or less headroom. And I'm going to go with that. So then um, then when I'm happy with that adjustment, I can click the um, check mark or press return. And then it crops. So now my image, if I go to image, image size, you'll see that it's now set to 6 inches by 6 inches. And it is at 200 pixels per inch. For the last step, it says to resample that looks funny it says to resample everything to 72 pixels print by going to image image size which is what i just did so to resample that's changing the number of pixels you can do that by just checking resample and changing the resolution to 72 here and it actually changes the number of pixels in dimensions because so before it was at 200 you see the dimensions are 1200 by 1200, but when I change the resolution to 72, it changes the number of pixels that the image is made up of. Now it's just 432 by 432, but it's still going to be 6 inches by 6 inches in any case, but a lot smaller image. So we're just going to say OK there, and then that's done. So that's what you turn in and you can click off your crop tool by clicking on the move tool or something else and then that's what you would turn in. So I'm going to save that and let's move on to fruits and sorts. So I'm going to close this, close all these. I don't have to save these. These are my source images here. Okay, 